Welcome, everyone. My name is Karen Garside, and I'll be your conference operator for today's national audio conference titled Documentation and Coding Musts for NSTs, CSTs, and BPPs. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session, and instructions on how to participate will follow at that time. As a reminder, this call is being recorded and will be made available for purchase on audio CD, print, and electronic transcript. This audio conference has been CEU approved by the American Academy of Professional Coders. <coughs> At the end of today's event, you will hear a CEU index number. You will need this index number to report your CEU to the AAPC. Please remember to stay on the line and have your pen and paper ready. I would now like to introduce your speaker for today, Melanie Witt, RN, CPC, C-O-B-G, M-A. Melanie Witt is an independent coding education consultant and a well-known speaker and recognized expert in the area of coding and reimbursement for OBGYN services. She is the former program manager of the Department of Coding and Nomenclature, an American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Ms. Witt, welcome to the program. We're now ready to begin. Thank you very much, and good afternoon, everybody. I hope everyone's having a pleasant fall, or the beginning thereof. <clears throat> it looks like uh, here in New Mexico we may be getting snow tonight. So fall is definitely going into winter. Not that that has much to do with the uh, topic in hand today. We're going to be talking about testing for fetal well-being. And I'm going to go into some detail about the documentation that will be required and some of the coding issues that surround NSTs, uh, construction stress tests, and biophysical profiles of different kinds. Um, it turns out that the actual goal of fetal surveillance of any kind, either using these three tests or just simply listening to the baby's heartbeat, is to hopefully prevent fetal death. In other words, by knowing <clears throat> ahead of time that there is a problem with the fetus, interventions might come to play that could prevent uh, this outcome from occurring. Now, the NST and the biophysical profile uh, tests are based on an assessment of the fetal heart rate patterns, and they have been used in a clinical setting for almost 30 years. The problem is that um, the results of this surveillance have not really demonstrated improved perinatal outcomes. In other words, you might pick up the fact that their baby is in trouble, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can save the fetus. Uh, but even given that, they have become very useful tools for the management of high-risk pregnancies and are recognized by the majority of payers as being a useful tool uh, for which they will, will uh, give you additional reimbursement above and beyond the global package. Now, the NST, the non-stress test, uh, measures the heart rate of the fetus in response to its own movements. This definition is important, as I will show you in just a minute, because some people get confused when uh, monitors are strapped onto the mother. Is this an NST? Are we, are we listening to heartbeat? Or what are we doing uh, with the baby? <clears throat> so in order for it to be this response, um, the idea is that you're measuring to see that if the fetus will react the same way to movement as, uh, say, a live human person would. In other words, you know that if you start moving down and walking down somewhere or if you run in place, you what? Your heartbeat ra rises. You get a faster heartbeat. That means that your body is responding with normal oxygen levels that you have in your body to be able to respond that way. And in a fetus situation, it would mean that the fetal heart rate is reactive to movement. In other words, as soon as the baby moves, the heart rate increases, and this is what you expect. This test, the NST, uh, measures movement, and usually this movement is either indicated by the mother or there is a piece of equipment that puts a blip that say, ah, uh, there's some activity going on here, uh, for about 20 to 30 minutes. So this is not a real fast test. If the baby is sleeping um, the baby may have to be awoken, and the test can last longer than 30 minutes, but predominantly it's a 20- to 30-minute test. 
Now, the standard for this test is to perform it after 28 weeks of gestation. And the reason for that is if a fetus is younger than 28 weeks, in most cases, that fetus can't respond in a meaningful way to this tracking of the movements. In other words, you're not getting a clear picture of what's going on. The baby has not been developed well enough. Now, there are cases when an NST may be done prior to 28 weeks, but usually that's in extremely high-risk cases or when something is terribly wrong and they want to double-check. I've shown you here an example of a strip for an NST so that you can see, in addition to the accelerations bar, there's also a place on there that marks fetal movements, and there's a tick mark every time there is a fetal movement. And this is required as part of your documentation for an NST. And as I said uh, just a few minutes ago, there is a difference between maternal and fetal monitoring and an NST. You can do an NST, for instance, um, in early labor, but frequently the patient is brought in and the purpose of, of strapping the, the uh, <clears throat> transducer on her is to decide whether or not she's actually in uh, labor having contractions, which is not what an NST measures, uh, and therefore it can't be billed as an NST. In order to bill an NST, the test has to have been done. There has to be a strip there. Um, and the physician has to in, have interpreted that strip, and there needs to be a written or dictated report entered into the record as well. Now, we all know, uh, or we will know very quickly, that there are only two results for this test. It's either reactive or it's non-reactive. But a physician also needs to, for an interpretation, is what does this mean for this patient? So it isn't enough just to write down the result. There needs to be some indication of where are we going to go from here. Does this mean that the baby needs to be delivered now? Does this mean that everything looks fine and we don't have to repeat the NST? So there needs to be some additional information. If that NST is performed in the hospital setting, then the OBGYN can bill for it using the 59025 code, but would add a modifier 26 uh, for the interpretation of that NST. And as I said, you only end up with two results. It's either reactive, which is considered a normal test. To be reactive, it means that there were two or more fetal heart rate increases within a 20-minute span. And those accelerations increased by 15 beats for about 15 seconds. And it's always related to fetal movement. Those things uh, should be...